Okay, I've been having trouble with uh, QuickTime today, but hopefully I can get this video to record properly this time. So uh, for this problem, this is the problem. I demonstrated this in class. Basically, you take two bouncy balls, one large, that's M2, and one small one, and you drop them uh, with the small one directly over the, the big one, basically touching. Um, drop them from some height. They go down, they hit the ground. So here they are just before they hit the ground at speed of U. And then they bounce, and the big one comes back up at a speed of U. Or sorry, the big one bounces first, perfectly elastically off the ground, which means it comes back at a speed of U. And the uh, little one is going down with a speed of U, and they collide one-dimensionally, and they have some final speeds. And so we want to find, what we're particularly interested in, is the speed of the top ball uh, after the collision in terms of... Uh, I'm going to make it in terms of M1, the masses, M1 and M2, and then also uh, I'm going to say in terms of U, the uh, speed they have just before they hit the ground or just before these collisions start. And I'm going to let U show through one-dimensional kinematics, if you like, or energy or whatever, that U is equal to the square root of 2GH. Um, but that's uh, a side that's not really part of this problem, although it is the kind of thing we might tack on to a problem like this in the test. So, for a perfectly elastic one-dimensional collision, okay, what that what we have here is we have two conditions that are that hold. One is that momentum is conserved, and that's always true. Okay, that's true for any collision. And then the other one is that kinetic energy is conserved. Actually, let me move that over a little. Uh, Ke conserved. And that one is true only in a perfectly elastic collision. So um, let's see. I'm going to say this uh, this drawing here obviously is our before. Uh, I'm going to call that I for initial. And then this is after the collision. F is final. Uh, I'm going to define our positive y-axis going up. So let's write out these two conservation equations here and then see what we can do with them mathematically to find V1. So uh, for the first one, we have M1. So the momentum of, of the top one, of M1, is M1 times U. And remember, it's going downwards. Positive Y is up, and it's going downwards. So this is actually a negative momentum. Momentum is a vector, so you have to be careful of your signs. M2U, then, is the momentum of this guy, and it's going up, so that's all fine. And then that is going to be equal to uh, M1V1 plus M2V2, which are the final momentums of these guys. Okay. So that's our momentum conservation equation there. I'm gonna, ooh, maybe I could do a straight line. Ooh. Yes, the only way I could possibly draw a straight line is with the help of the, the computer. Anyway, um, the conservation of kinetic energy equation then. So remember, kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So this is the initial kinetic energy of ball 1, the initial kinetic energy of ball 2, and then final kinetic energy of ball one and final kinetic energy of ball two. Simple enough. Now, if you just uh, sort of start winging it from here, uh, basically you've got to solve for two unknowns, V1 and V2. Everything else is given. Um, I see M1 and M2 are given and U is given. So if you're just trying to solve for, for uh, V1 and V2, you might be tempted to you know substitute, say, solve this equation for V2 and then sub in over there. and that is the route to algebra hell because you'll end up with uh, square roots and uh, quadratic equations and all that coming to, to eat you alive. Um, it just it gets to be a nightmare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a what I consider a fairly uh, efficient way to solve these equations that sort of gets you through the cleanest possible solution. Without it's it's a little tricky. You have to sort of know what you're looking for, but. Um, it's it's very efficient once you've got it, and it's it's a safe way through this. So the first step is to gather M1 and M2 in both of the equations. Okay. So um, what that means is you take all the M1 terms in the momentum equation, for example, and put them on the left. So M1 and then you factor out the m1. So this one is going to start with a negative m1u. That's this first term here. 
and then the M1V1 we're going to bring over here. And that's going to come over, it's going to be a negative M1V1. And so I want, what I want to do here, just to save a step, is bring it into the parentheses immediately, like that. Okay, now on the right side, you're going to get M2, V2, of course, that's the one that was over here, and then you're also going to bring over the M2U, it becomes negative when you do that, and there you go. Okay, um, that's the first step. And over here, um, for the kinetic energy equation, you do the same thing. Now, I'm going to take the liberty of just canceling out these one halves immediately because we have no use for them. They're just going to get in the way. So um, what you get then is you get m1 u squared, and then we're going to subtract off uh, the m1 v1 squared and bring it over to this side. So that's going to end up being like that. Again, we've gathered the m1 equate or the m1 terms on the left side. We're going to gather the m2s on the right side, v2 squared, and then minus u squared. Okay, so now we have both equations gathered up. That's step one. Great. Step two. Um, what we want to do now is we want to, uh, let's see, we want to factor the kinetic energy equation. We want this to come into some, not necessarily simpler form, but some form we can use. And the trick is, and this is hard to see if you don't know where you're going, but this is the difference of two squares, and so is this. And so what we want to do is we want to factor the kinetic energy equation as the difference of two squares. Difference of squares. Okay. Actually, let me. Where's. Whoops, not D. Squares. Squards. What the hell is that? All right. So um, M1, and then this side is going to be U plus V1 times U minus V1. And that's going to equal M2 times V2 plus U. Yep times v2 minus u. Okay, so that's step two done. Now what we do is, um, what you can see here is, let me, I'm gonna take a, uh, I'm gonna take red, and look at the m1 times u plus v1 here, and look, it's m1 times u plus v1. And the only thing missing from this over here on the left-hand side is that negative sign. We'll get to that in a minute. But if you look at the right-hand sign, let me get a different color just to make this super clear. M2 and V2 minus U. Well, look, there's M2 and there's V2 minus U. So what I'm saying is that the right-hand side of this equation appears in the right-hand side of the kinetic energy equation, and the left-hand side of the momentum equation appears in the left-hand side of the Ke equation, with the exception of the negative sign, which I'm going to put in right now. And so step three, basically, is we use this and so if I have that negative sign in there, and then I can underline the negative sign, and everything in here is on the left-hand side now that I've added the negative, and everything here is on the right-hand side. So you can use the kinetic energy equation, or sorry, use the momentum equation to cancel the kinetic energy equation. So use the momentum equation to cancel the kinetic energy equation. Or really, you're dividing the kinetic energy equation by the momentum equation. This is the trick. This is what makes this work. Because now, when we take out all this stuff here, what we're left with is the negative u minus v1 on the left-hand side. And that equals, then you get rid of this green under, over, underlying stuff here, v2 minus u. Okay? So now we've got this equation. And at this point, it's fairly simple uh, solving two equations you know, uh, process here. Now we actually take this, and I think you can probably figure it out from here, but I'm just going to write this in. Uh, solve what's left for one unknown substitute, sub sorry, substitute into another equation. Okay, and by another equation, I mean just anything you've got. So what I'm going to do now is, since uh, we want to find V1, that was our, our required answer here, I'm going to take this and I'm going to solve this equation for V2. So this is going to be V2 equals, and then what I'm going to have is the negative U is going to come over here. Is that right? No, this should be a positive. That's what I did wrong. Okay, so sorry, this 
V2 plus U should come down. If that was confusing, I apologize. Okay, so V2, you're going to subtract this U over here, and you get the negative U there. So negative 2U, and then plus V1. So V2 is going to be equal to negative 2U plus V1. And now I'm going to take that, and I'm going to plug that in to, let's see, probably this here is the easiest thing to plug into. And so I want to solve for V1. So now I'm going to take this, let's see, let's be very careful here, and say U plus V1 equals, so I'm going to take this term here, keep it, and then I'm going to divide through by negative M1. So negative M2 over M1, and then this term is going to be, in parentheses, is going to be V2 minus U, but I'm going to substitute in this V2. So this is going to be V2 is going to be V1 minus 2u, and then I'm adding in the extra 3u. So that's taking this and substituting it into this. Okay, so now uh, where are we? Now it's pretty easy. Now we can, I almost wish I'd done this differently actually. Um, there's actually a, an even easier way to get to the solution. Probably what I should have done was taken this and substituted it in up here. That would have been even faster, but whatever. Um, it's done now. So this is going to get us to, I'm going to go with V1 plus U equals, and then this is going to be negative M2 over M1 V1 uh, plus 3 M2 over M1 times U. And then you're going to get, um, oh, this is ugly. This is really ugly. I mean, it's, it's, it's not hard, right? But it's really ugly. So I'm going to go and substitute in, I'm going to multiply through by M1 to flatten it. So M1 V1 plus M1U equals negative M2V1 plus 3M2U. And you'll notice this is actually, this. I'm really looking dumb now because this is actually, whoops, sorry. This is actually almost exactly what it would have gotten if I just substituted this equation up into here. So substitute it into the momentum equation, at least in this case, it looks like it would have been the best way to go. So then this turns into, I'm going to get, uh, m1 plus m2, so I'm gathering the v1 terms on the left, and then I'm gathering the u terms on the right, and it's equal 3m2 minus m1 times u. Okay, so that's a little cramped, but what we're going to get now, and I'm going to write this up here as our answer. Whoops, no, don't do that. Okay, oh, now I'm, okay, that was close. Uh, when that little pop-up wheel menu appears, I, I, almost always end up screwing something up. Okay, so V1 is going to be 3M2 minus M1 over M1 plus M2. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Hold on. Yep, yep, times U. Okay, and that is going to be our answer. And I'm even going to uh, draw a... No, I'm not. Okay, hold on, hold on. Draw a little box around it to, ooh, pretty. Okay, um, one thing to note is that, and this is the the situation you get when M2, if M2 is much, much bigger than M1, then what you get is V1 is going to equal, so when M2 is much bigger than M1, basically 3M2 minus M1 is just going to be equal to 3M2, and M1 plus M2 is just going to be equal to M2. So what happens is, if M2 is much greater than M1, then V1 ends up being three times U. So if you do this experiment, or if you do this little demo yourself, which you can do if you have a bouncy ball, two bouncy balls of different sizes in a floor somewhere, or the ground, a hard, like a driveway or something. Um, if this is like a basketball and this is a tennis ball or something, uh, you are going to get the tennis ball shooting off straight up at three times the speed they have when they hit the ground, which is going to be a lot. So uh, don't do this anywhere where it could fly up and hit things and break them. In fact, even uh, if they're perfect, if they're not perfectly aligned, it can also go off to the side. And that's what I will try to look at in the next video, assuming this one works properly. Uh, knock on wood there, and uh, and see what happens there. But the point is, be safe when you do this. Make sure you're not around breakable stuff or you'll you'll get your parents mad at you. And if your parents get mad at you for breaking something, doing a physics demo, don't tell them it was a physics demo. I'm not taking the heat for you. All right. Uh, enjoy your snow day, and I hope there's another video coming.